to practice noticing and practice noticing and noting during our nonfiction reading. Thank you. Yep, we're gonna practice noticing important things and making taking notes on those during nonfiction reading, right? And so as readers, we've got to be thinking about when we're reading. Um, we have to be thinking the entire time we're reading, and we also have to be taking time to stop, notice things that we think are important and write them down. We call that stop and jot. You may have heard that term before. You're going to stop reading and jot down notes or jot down things you learned. It's a little bit different, right, than when we read it in fiction, right? And we're going to talk about how it's a little bit different. In fiction, it was a lot of reading and writing down notice things about the characters or parts of a story you thought were important or might have meaning later. Maybe we worked on writing things down that we heard over and over in the story to show that it was important. Right, taking notes and making uh, writing things down in nonfiction is a little bit different. And we're gonna talk about that as we move through the lesson today. During reading, who wants, who can read that first little thing for us? It starts with look at the table. Who can read that first little thing? One once. Corbin, go for it. Thank you, sir. Look at the table of contents. What page would you, would we go to in order to learn more about? Blank? Okay, yeah, about blank, right? So you may look at your table of contents and think, oh, this is something I want to look, um, I want to try to learn more about. I'm going to go to that page. Uh, I saw some other hands up. Cynthia, can you read the next one? Where is the first? Where is the first place your eyes go when you look at this page? Thank you. Yep. So in other words, when you turn to open to a page, what are the first things you're noticing? Um, that third line, Clay. What is the most interesting fact you learned about blank on this page? Yeah, so maybe what is the most interesting fact you learned about something? You may want to write that down. Um, so see, Denise, can you read the next one? What have you read? Or sorry, no, what did the author do? What did the author do to make this easier for you to understand. Thank you. So yeah, so thinking, did the author tell you the definition of a word? Did the author use text features that gave you extra facts or a picture to help you? What did that author include that helped make that easier for you to understand while you were reading? Alex J, can you read the next one? What have you read that you already knew? What have you read that you already knew from some other book or source? Keep going. Is there anything? Is is there anything you you think you disagree with? Thank you, sir. And then Eric, can you read the last one? Why are some words? Is Eric still with us? Eric, can you read that last one? You, Eric, you're still muted. Thank you. Why are some words in boldface italics. Italics, italics underlined or in all capitals? Why did you make sure you understood those words? Thank you, right? So usually those things in bold, italics, or underlined mean that there's, or maybe a different color, indicate that they're an important word, right? And we have to think about what do we do to make sure we understood those words or understood what those words meant. So I'm going to read you a little bit of section, sections we're going to practice of the chemical reactions book that I picked yesterday. So if I look at my table of contents, I see I have a list of different things that are in the book. Everyday chemistry, combining substances, examining properties, creating a product, categorizing reactions, world of chemistry, the glossary index in your turn. So let's say I wanted to learn about examining properties of chemical reactions. I could open my table of contents. I could see that's on the 10th page and go straight to it, right? This kind of goes along with what we were looking at yesterday. If I have a factual book like this, I might not feel like I have to read every single page. Maybe I already know a lot about combining substances and I feel like I can skip that section. Maybe that's the first thing I wanna go to. But in this case, I'm gonna go to that first section, everyday chemistry, all right? 
And when I'm going to read this out loud to you guys, okay, and then I will give you some time to write down any facts you think as a note that you think that you should write down from this section. I will say already answering the first question, what did my eyes go to first on this page? I immediately saw the fireworks, right? Um, right here on this page. And like, I think that's interesting because that makes me already think and probably understand that fireworks must be an example of a chemical reaction, right? That we, that we know about. So I'm gonna go ahead and read this section. When we think of chemistry, it's hard not to picture a lab with students wearing coats and goggles and using flasks and burners. But chemistry doesn't happen in school. It regularly occurs all around it. Sorry, it doesn't just happen in school. It regularly occurs all around us. Take breakfast, for example. Maybe you ate an egg or a piece of bread. Those foods are created through chemistry. And the way your body takes those foods and turns them into energy is another example of chemistry at work. In these cases, it's a chemical reaction. In other words, a change, a change takes place that alters the material's makeup. The raw egg changes when it's scr scrambled or boiled. The food changes when your body digests it. Chemical reactions are such a normal part of our lives that we hardly note when they take place. We take for granted that when we, we put gas in our cars, it will fuel them. We don't think about science when we bake cookies or cakes. And chemistry is the last thing on our minds when we're warming ourselves by a wood burning fire watching fireworks up in the sky, or admiring the changing colors of autumn leaves. But without chemical reactions, none of these things would happen. All right, so first, I notice that chemical reaction is in red, right? I can see right here, I'm gonna underline it on my page. Chemical reaction is right there in red, meaning that chemical reaction is an important word for me to understand. So I'd have to kind of stop and think about what is a chemical reaction. Well, based on what I'm reading, it's when different things that uh, it's, it says right here in the sentence below after that, in other words, a change that takes, play, that takes place that alters the material's makeup. So it's when chemicals somehow interact to change whatever was originally there. If I was writing down a fact from this page, I would probably write that we have chemical reactions in everyday breakfast, that when we cook an egg, that would be an example of a chemical reaction because I've never really thought of food necessarily when we're baking it or making it as a chemical reaction. I, I knew like once it gets inside your body and you digest the food, there's chemical reactions taking place there. But I think for me, an interesting thing to write down would be that bake or cooking an egg or baking cookies would be an example of every day, a chemical reaction. All right, let's look at the next section. Combining substances. Anybody want to share what's the first thing that you notice when you look at this page? Michael, go ahead. I saw oxygen. Oh, so like this little thing over here about oxygen, like the, um, we call that a diagram where it has the little arrows and shows what each little thing means. Cool. Anybody else, what's the first thing you notice when I turn to this page? CJ. The periodic table of elements. Yeah, the periodic table of elements. Is there anybody else whose eyes went straight to that? That's where my eyes went right to that. I see Clay raised his hand too. Yeah, my eyes went straight to the periodic table because it's like got all this, a load of information and it's like a lot of stuff that looks kind of hard to understand. But then if you look where Michael notices oxygen, it's actually taking the O for oxygen on the periodic table and zooming in what that looks like up here. So those kind of actually go together. I'm gonna read this. And then I'm gonna give you three minutes to write down something that you learned or a fact you thought was important from this page, all right? Combining substances. Fresh cookies don't just appear out of thin air, don't we wish. You have to combine ingredients first before you bake them. For any chemical reaction, you need ingredients. In this case, we call them reactants because they're going to react to a chemical change. Notice reactants and chemical change are both in that red font, right? They're important words and that means Reactants are things that are gonna to react to changing the chemicals. In baking, reactants are things such as sugar, eggs, and flour, but they could be just about anything from oxygen or water to copper or salt. The simplest form of reactant is an element. An element is a substance that contains only one kind of atom. For example, oxygen is in an element. Water uh, is made up of two kinds of elements, oxygen and hydrogen. When two or more elements bind together like this, the result is a compound. Compounds can be reactants too. 
There are far too many compounds to list them all, but the number of elements is limited. We make sense of them by the way, a, by way of a chart called the periodic table. The chart organizes the elements by atomic number. That's the number of protons in each atom. It also contains the atomic mass, or the number of protons plus the number of neutrons. So I'm gonna give you a couple minutes to write down a fact from that page in your notebook or something you think is important. I wanna point out, we talked about what an author does to help us understand. What does the author do on this page to kind of help us understand what we're reading? What are some things? I see several things that are examples of what the author is doing to help us understand. Does anybody notice any of them? Guadalupe. Pictures. So we have a picture of the periodic table and this diagram that shows how it works. So if you see the diagram for oxygen, it says this is the element name, this is the chemical symbol, that's the atomic mass up here, and then the atomic number eight is right here. So you have that. What else does the author do after a lot, especially after a lot of the words that are in bold red font, what does the author do? So like for example down here, it says the simplest form of a reactant is an element. An element is a substance that contains only one kind of atom. So elements in red, what does the author do to help you understand what, the el what element means? Anybody? Bueller. Underline it. I underline it. They, what is it? I'm gonna read that again. What do they do to help you understand what the word element means? Because the author, let me put it this way. The author could just say the simplest form of reactant is an element. For example, oxygen is an element. Water is made up of two kinds of elements. But they say the simplest form of reactant is an element. An element is a substance that contains only one kind of atom. Michael, go ahead. What does the author do to help you understand what those, some of those words in red mean? In that section, I need more time to think. Okay. Ania, what do you think? What do you notice? He talked about what it me meant, and he showed us like a little chart of it, and then he pointed out the word oxygen on the chart, and he labeled it like with like the elements, he labeled the things that were on there, like the mass and the O for oxygen and other things on there. Yeah, they give you first the author, the first part of what you said is very true. They tell you, he tells you what the word means, he or she, we don't know if it's a boy or girl author, but the author tells you what the word means. It says, this is an element. An element is a substance that contains only one kind of atom. Then it gives an example. It says, for example, oxygen is an element. And then they have the picture up here about oxygen on the periodic table that shows you what all those other words they talk about mean. So look at how the author's combining a lot of different things. They're combining um, the word in the bold font and then the definition for the word in the bold font and then an example of an element. And then they have you show you what an element looks like on the periodic table. So they have all kinds of things that go together. All right, I'm going to give you two minutes to write down one fact from that page. Two minutes, then I'm going to let you some people share what they wrote down. Two minutes. On your marks, get set, go. I'm setting a timer to keep us on track.
You guys got one minute left. There's a lot of people I should see writing who I do not see writing anything. I'm noticing Alejandro's writing, Cynthia and Kayla are writing things down, Denise and Corbin. I can tell that Guadalupe and Ania and Alex J and CJ are writing. Thank you guys. And stop. Would anyone like to share a fact you wrote down from this page? Just one little fact. Clay, go for it. I didn't have time to write all of it down, so I'll read it off from the page. Okay. An element is a substance that contains only one kind of kind of Adam. Okay, thank you, sir. Anybody else write down something different they would like to share? One once, twice. Okay, so your job today, when we let you go, oh, I accidentally skipped over one slide. Whoops, we have one more page, sorry. All right, what do your eyes go to first on this one? Hmm. What do your eyes go to first on this page, Ania? Um, the food, like the cookies and the honey. Yeah, the cookie dough. I look right. I looked right at the cookie dough, like right over here. This like uncooked cookie dough, because I love to eat cookie dough. Anybody else? What did you notice first, Corbin? I saw the bubble tea first. Over here on the right? Yeah. Tricky mixing, yeah. I kind of noticed that too, because it looks like a kind of an activity they're gonna show you can do at home. Uh, Clay, did you wanna share one too? Yes, I do. When I first looked at that, I saw that one piece movie, I would call it. The cookie smoothie, I guess. With the chocolate chip in it because it looks cooked. But if my participations were in the way, I would saw that honey first. And that should always look good. I got you. All right. Thank you, sir. I'm going to go ahead and read this page to you guys now. It says, chemical reactions don't happen every time two substances combine. Sometimes the combinations simply form mixtures. In these cases, a physical change occurs, not chemical. So what that means is when they mix, they may sh it may look different, but there's not actually a reaction that's happening chemically. A physical change can affect the way a substance looks, such as its size, shape, or color. Sugar will dissolve in water when combined. They form a type of mixture called a solution, but the sugar and water have not changed chemically. In fact, they can still be separated. Plain cookie dough is another solution. If you mix flour, sugar, butter, eggs, and other things to make the dough, this mixture would be difficult but not impossible to separate. Still, no chemical change has taken place. All gas mixtures are solutions. Take the air we breathe. It contains oxygen, sure, but it also has other elements such as nitrogen and compounds such as carbon dioxide. There are a total of 15 gases in our air. Solutions are just one kind of mixture. They're homogenous. In other words, all parts are evenly mixed and completely spread out. You can't see or tell one part from another. Uh, your plain cookie dough is homogenous as a homogenous mixture. Other mixtures are heterogeneous. Uh, they contain a little more of one part than another. You can easily see the different parts of the mixture. If your cookie dough and pieces of chocolate that you could see, or sorry, if your cookie dough had pieces of chocolate that you could see or even pick out, it would be heterogeneous, which if you look over here to the right, that's what this picture is showing, right? Homogenous, this is another way 
authors help show you. You may have trouble understanding what all that meant because the words are tough, but showing you right here that a homogenous mixture right here looks all the same and heterogeneous mixture over here, you can see all the little chocolate chips inside of the mixture, right? So you can actually see the differences. So your job today, when you go out, is going to be to practice what we did and what we talked about today. Think about some of those during reading questions in that list and uh, before you stop and jot, think about one of your stop and jots could be the first thing I noticed on this page was, okay? So you're gonna go out and you're gonna open the book you chose on Epic yesterday, all right? And then you're gonna spend 20 minutes. I would like, if you have a timer to set or if you have a clock around you, I want you to read for 20 full minutes, all right? You're gonna list three to five things you noticed from the book you read. So that could be a diagram, something could be like, I saw the picture of the cookie dough and I noticed this. It could be a fact that you learned when you read, kind of like how we wrote down facts to learn from the last page. But everybody has to have three to five. If you do not have three to five, you will not get full points for the assignment, all right? You need to have three to five and it can be the book you chose on Epic yesterday. If you cannot remember, if you cannot remember, I am gonna show you one more time since we're not doing small group today, how to get to some of those books on Epic, all right? So if you, I'm sharing my screen I'm gonna go to, uh oh. You could click on Epic right from your home page on your portal, but you could also go to Tuesday and then go to reading. And there's a little link to Epic over here with the class code right next to it. And you're gonna open up Epic, click on this, and it's gonna log you in. And then let's pretend I'm for a minute, I'm Alejandro. Alejandro was going to type in nonfiction up here, or if he remembers his book, like I could type in chemical reactions, right? And then that, my book pops up right here. Make sure you separate fiction and nonfiction. All right. That way, you know, you're getting a nonfiction book, chemical reactions. And then if I want to add it to my favorites, so I don't have to keep going back to search for it. I just click this little heart. So if I click this little heart and favorite that book, if Alejandro goes back to his favorites now, if he goes to my library on the homepage, that book is in his favorites. Don't worry, Alejandro, I'll go and take it out. I'll unfavorite it right now. All right, so that's how you can get to those books on Epic. I would suggest you're, you should be reading the same book throughout this week. So go, once you get back to that book from yesterday, make sure you favorite that book so you don't have to keep searching for it every single time and you can just go to your library. All right, so reading, nonfiction, stop and jot, all those directions we just went over are on here. In the chat, before you exit the meeting today, I would like you to type in how many stop and jots you need to write down on the assignment. All right, so you need to type it to me in the chat. How many different things do you need to write down when you go out and work on your own today? We are not, we are not meeting in small group with me or Ms. Weibel today. We're just giving you time to work on this before we meet for math at 1020. So in the chat, how many things you need to write down? 